Good morning. It is Thursday, March 9th. Thank you for joining us for Up to the Minute. I'm Sade Campbell, Strategic Enrollment Communications and Social Media Manager here at HCC, joined by, by the first, for the first time by my co-host, Dr. Darren Baskin, who's the Interim Officer of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And I just want to kick things off by saying welcome to the show as a host, Darren. Well, thank you, Sade. Good morning and good morning to everyone out there. I'm excited. You know, me and Sade are a party. We put us together. <laughs> so, uh, however, we're also live on the Houston Community Co College District Facebook page, not HCC, and YouTube. We're also on Twitter, LinkedIn, and on HCC TV at noon, 5, and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. So you guys can find us everywhere. Yes, absolutely. And Thursdays are Virtual Family Fun Day, and we're combining that with Women's History Month to talk about the Fly Girls of World War II. Yes, you heard that right. Joining us to talk about that is Maggie Brown, Executive Director of the 1940 Air Terminal Museum. Welcome to the show, Maggie. Thank you. All right, you and Darren are going to have an awesome conversation in just a second, but we're going to kick things off of talking about a spring design-a-thon. Uh, joining us to talk about that is Andre Herman, who's the department chair of HCC's Digital Communication, Gaming, and Simulation Department. Welcome back to the show, Andre. Hi, thank you. We're glad to have you back here to talk about the spring design-a-thon, which is part of HCC Digital Digital and IT Center of Excellence in partnership with HCC's Entrepreneurial Initiatives Division. And this year is billed as, the, as solving a real world challenge. So tell us exactly what someone can expect from a design-a-thon. So uh, thanks, thanks again for having me here. Uh, so this year's 48 hour design-a-thon, uh, it's open to all HCC students, uh, the general population uh, students, dual credit, uh, early college, and then also students from uh, other programs and initiatives. Uh, what students can expect from a design-a-thon is really 48 hours of problem solving. Um, all the participants will be uh, the, the morning of the event. They will receive a creative brief in which they will be presented the, the challenge. Um, and this challenge, uh, hopefully they will be successful at solving and completing the problem within 48 hours. Um, what they can expect is not only a hands-on experience learning, learning software and also some of the um, manufacturing skills in the makerspace at West Houston Institute, but they're also going to be helped and led by um, full-time faculty from the digital communication program. So they'll have mentors there. Uh, so they'll get a well-rounded uh, experience. So it's not like we're tossing them in uh, alone and just saying, here you go, figure it out. We we will have mentors there to, to help them along. Yeah, you know, it's, it's when I think back uh, to my college days, you know, what you know, you see the face. It wasn't long ago. <laughs> Uh, what stands out the most are those outside the classroom learning opportunities. Uh, and, you know, when I think about what you're describing, that's, that just sounds incredible because it's about application. And mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of what students are looking for right now is, you know, colleges. I'm going, I'm reading my textbook, I'm taking, but no, you have this opportunity to really solve real world problems. And I don't think people think about design being a part of problem solving. So this sounds like an amazing opportunity. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I, and I'd like to add on to what you just said is that really, you know, as stu students, no matter whether it's HCC or another organization, is that oftentimes we're fo the, our students are focused on classroom assignments um, and opportunities like the design-a-thon, it really challenges students of all levels to have a senior level project that they can, they can learn from. And it really doesn't matter whether you're a design student, an engineering student, a medical student, a high school student learning English, everyone can benefit from design thinking and, and learning these graphic design based visual problem solving skills. It really doesn't matter what you're practicing or what industry you're in. These are real world skills that you can apply to just about anything. Yeah, you know, I, I think about just, I think I was reading an article and I can't remember what it was related to, but they were talking about 
skills that you can always use for a side hustle, skills that you can mm -hmm. uh, use in every type of world, what role in design was one of them and video editing is one of them. We're in a creation, we in are in a creation era. Um, all of the platforms that are so available for free are essentially teaching this generation how to create in a way that wasn't available before, right? You think back all the way to MySpace and you were kind of doing coding, <laughs> yep. but now this, you're doing video production, you're doing a design. I mean, you have access to so many things. So what you were sharing about all these different majors that should consider, hey, I may not be in design, but this is valuable for me to be a part of. But at some point, at some point, all of these other students and in industries, you're going to need to, some sort of design-based skill to produce a report, to produce right. a, a newsletter. But also one last thing I want to add to this that we didn't mention was team building skills and collaboration. Uh, we will have students who come in that, that say, hey, I want to do this by myself. But in previous uh, design-a-thons, students, students come in and it's, sometimes people come in by themselves and they're like, hey, you have a great idea. I want to team up. I have something to add to the group. So they learn communication. They learn about critiques and discussing their work. So it, it's going to be a really amazing experience for all those involved. Now, you know, the running joke is that the, nothing unites college students together about how much they disdain group projects. But this sounds like a great opportunity to really build your team building skills. And I don't want to zoom past design thinking, right? Because I think that's such an important skill set. And it's a fancy word for you start with the problem. You fully define that problem and then you work toward that solution. So there's a lot of collaboration opportunities to, to what you said. But in summation, it sounds like just a great resume building opportunity to walk away from as well. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, we've talked a lot about it, but we haven't told anybody how to join, right? When is it? Where is it? How can somebody sign up? Right. That yeah, that would that would be extremely helpful. Um, so uh, the Designathon, as I mentioned, is a forty-eight hour, uh, two-day event. Uh, it's going to be held April first, Saturday, April first, Sunday, April second. Uh, from nine to five, but we're extending our hours till seven and an additional two hours. So if students need the time and the space to work, uh, we have that cushion. Um, there is, we, we do have um, the, the event can be, you can get more information and register on the ID Loom page. Uh, we can share, we can share that link in the, in the chat. Um, we're offering, um, it's sponsored by uh, a gracious, uh, a really gracious grant from the HCC Foundation. Um, so with, through that grant, grant we're providing uh, food. We're going to feed everybody who will who will be attending. Uh, we're providing uh, cash cash awards in the form of uh, Walmart gift cards. Uh, we're also going to be providing uh, HCC uh, grants uh, for for as awards as well. And then we also have uh, sponsors. Who uh, right now we have the company uh, Wacom who make the the Wacom tablets. Uh, they've already graciously donated one of their tablets as a raffle item. So at the end of each day, we'll be raffling um, prizes off as well. Um, so we th this is just that this is just a great experience, and we really want to make sure that all students across the entire HCC district uh, have an opportunity to participate in this. So it'll be held at the West Houston Institute. Uh, at the Ailey Hayes campus, April 1st and April 2nd, from nine, awesome. nine to five, plus or minus a few hours. Plus or minus a few hours. Now, you know, I, I guess I can wrap things up. What stands, what, when you think about students who've been through this process before or been through this um, opportunity before, what's one story that like sticks out to you? Somebody that just kind of walked away from this experience and when it was able to take it and just really maximize what they gained from it. Yeah, so we, uh, the last, uh, I'll try to keep this brief. So last yeah. year we had a design-a-thon uh, where uh, we had a real world challenge where uh, we had a golf, we, we had a golf uh, event, a golfing event. The students were challenged with creating uh, golf trophies. And so we, we had, um, you know, as I can't really pinpoint one particular student, I think the, the, be the beauty of last year's event was that we had students coming from all kinds of different fields. 
and who didn't think they could draw. They didn't think that they could work with a group. They didn't think that they could learn a new software in, in a matter of hours. And in the end, we had every student learned how to sketch on paper. They got their idea from their brain down on paper. They were able to take that idea from paper and, and clean it up and simplify it and transition and translate it from paper to a, a computer file, which then they learned how to take that computer file and actually output a physical 3D object. And so a lot of students were really excited that, you know, they, they never thought that they could do this sort of thing. And in the end, after, after a number of days, you know, they, they produced something they didn't think was possible. That is such an amazing testament of getting out of your comfort zone. So if you're looking for that opportunity, resume building opportunities, getting out of your comfort zone, and of course, those cash prizes that uh, were shared, definitely check out and sign up for the Designathon. Thank you so much, Andre Herman, Department Chair of the Digital Communication, Gaming, and Simulation Department here at HGC, for joining us. And Can I we'll make have one last if, shout out. Get the shout out in. All right. So I, I just want, uh, again, I, I want to say thank you to the HCC Foundation for with, by sponsoring the grant. Uh, I also want to say thank you to the Southwest Center for Entrepreneurship, uh, Digital and Information Technology, COE, Digital Communication, and West Houston Institute and their Idea Studio Makerspace. Um, Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, without without those partnerships, uh, nothing like this would be possible. So thanks. Absolutely. Thankful Thursdays. Make sure we shout out who can make this possible. Well, we are going to soar right over to Darren's interview. See what I did there with the oh. with, with the flopping <laughs> oh, oh, I caught that, and I caught it when you soared it over. So so good, and and a great interview. And I'm so happy to know that this is happening because you guys did three of my favorite things. You created a catchy phrase design. Jonathan, love it. You guys talked about money for students, love it. And then you rounded it out by saying you're going to help them to develop teamwork. Amazing. So good job. And don't so, forget the food. Oh yeah, of course, never. So we're <laughs> we're going to switch gears a little bit, and we're going to switch over to something just as important to us uh, here at Houston Community College, and that's most definitely supporting. Uh, our diverse communities. So let's get a chance to talk with Maggie Brown. She's the executive director of the 1940s Air Terminal Museum and our virtual family fun day guest. Hey, Maggie. Hey, good morning, Dr. Baskin. Yeah, welcome back to our show. We're excited to learn more about the, this great exhibit that you're gonna discuss with us today. But first, give us a brief overview of the museum and its missions. So the uh, 1940 Air Terminal Museum is located on the west side of Hobby Airport. So it was the original 1940 um, airport access. So people would come in here and that's where your airport was. That's how you went out and got on the airplane. Um, so our mission now is as a museum is to um, um, uh, demonstrate the impact of uh, aviation on Houston's history and economic development. And we do that through the prism of architectural beauty, meaning the wow. building itself. So the building is Art Deco designed by Joseph Finger, who also designed Houston City Hall. Um, and so the building itself is a National Historic Landmark. Um, and so it, if you're into architecture, not just history, but also architecture, it's a great place to come and check out and take beautiful photographs. Oh, that sounds amazing. That sounds beautiful. I love good architecture. Of course, who doesn't love something that is beautiful to look at? And so that's amazing. And let me also say that you guys are right next to my favorite airport, just a plug in there, because I love me some hobby airports. So yeah, let's hobby, is, hobby is awesome. Yeah. yeah and, um, I want to add, um, since we are next to hobby, we actually have access to the runways. So we are able to take people out on the ramp. Um, if you come visit, you pay the fee to come in the museum, we can take you out there to take pictures, watch eyes here and watch Southwest planes go by all day. You can go out and get pretty close if they taxi by our, uh, by us, then you can get a pretty close up view of airplanes. It's pretty awesome. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yes, I'm, I'm all for that. But we'll get more into the museum and its permanent exhibits. But first, we all know what month it is. It's Women's History Month. Woo -woo. And we're happy to hear about this exhibit. I really want to hear about it. Fly Girls. Uh, what can you tell us about this exhibit? 
So the exhibit will be opening Saturday. Um, and so basically it tells the story of the Women's Air Force Service pilots, the WASP. But they actually started here at this airport. It was Houston Municipal Airport at the time. They were the Women's uh, uh, Flying Training Detachment. And the first class started here in November, 1942. And they were training here. Um, the story that I've heard is that, so the hangar next to us was called, was owned by Aviation Enterprises. And they were the civilian uh, company that sponsored and ran the WASP, uh, the WFTD and then the WASP program. And they have a whole other history too. Um, but the story is that that hangar had no, fee no women's restroom. So they would come to our building to use the restroom because there were women's facilities here. Um, so the first two classes were here, graduated, actually graduated over at Ellington Field. And then the, about mid middle of the third class, they moved out to Sweetwater, Texas and finished, the, the rest of the classes finished there. And that's, that is when they became the WASP. Oh. So it's, uh, I didn't really know until I started looking into it more that that program started here in Houston. It's Houston based, it has its roots here in Houston. You know, Maggie, I am, I am a fan of history and I love a good piece of history that I've never known before. So thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, I know that you guys have a lot of exhibits there. Um, what are some of the items that you have in this exhibit? So I'm actually putting the exhibit up right now, uh, the next couple of days. And I've, so I've, uh, it arrived, I've had the joy of going through everything. We have uniforms, um, we have their dress uniform. So the interesting thing is when they first started, and I think um, throughout the whole program um, for their training, like their jumpsuits and such, they didn't have women's sizes then. This was the first time that women had been in any kind of military operation um, as pilots. And so it's all men's size clothing. So they would wear these huge baggy jumpsuits. They did get, um, they were responsible when they came to Houston, they were, since they were civilian, they were responsible for paying for their transportation here. And they were told to show up in um, uh, their own shoes and wear hairnets while they were um, doing their work. Um, and so they kind of had to sponsor themselves. So we have um, the, uni the, the uniform that they chose was khaki pants, a white button up shirt, a leather um, like aviation jacket, like a pilot's uh, leather jacket. And then um, they had a mascot that was named Fifi Nella. And she was actually designed by Walt Disney. And uh, so she was designed, she was, a, if you've heard the, of the author Road Doll that wrote children's books, she was one of his characters. And so Walt Disney actually um, donated that character to the wasp and they used her as a mascot. So in the, in the displays, you'll see a lot of patches with Fifi Nella, a lot of different, uh, they had buttons and pins and things like that with Fifi Nella on them. Oh. You'll see things like that. You'll see some of the, um, like we have a pair of Armani sunglasses, that, uh, aviator sunglasses. Um, all, you know, all kinds of stuff, uh, orders and the story of their founder, one of their founders um, was Jackie Cochran and she's pretty famous in, in uh, aviation history as well. And she's the one right. that started the WFTD and, and led the loss. So, I mean, and, all kinds and, of stuff. And, and, I, and I see that and, and I appreciate the passion because uh, people who are passionate about history, they really understand how impactful and how important history is to all of us. So I definitely appreciate that. And you just keep dropping these nuggets of information. I love it. Uh, we've talked a little bit about some of the structures that you have at the museum and how amazing it is and how we can get to the airport if we come. I'm coming. And um, are, there, are there any other permanent exhibits that you have that you yes. want to tell us about? Yeah, uh, yeah, real quickly, I'll tell you the permanent exhibit. So the way it's set up, half the building is, we're all on the first floor of the building. Half the building is the permanent exhibit. And it basically tells the story of Houston's aviation history. Starting in 1910, the first flight in Houston was actually about three miles from here. Um, and it was by a Frenchman named Louis Paul Han. And then it goes through the 19 teens with World, uh, World War I, 1920s with the oil field development that had a big effect on Houston aviation. 1930s and 1940s, World War II, of course, and the WASP. And then the boom of 
post-war aviation and the um, um, the beginning of Trans Texas Airways and which was Aviation Enterprises, which I mentioned earlier. And so we just go through what what um, sort of the civilian airline history, uh, particularly with the airlines that flew out of this building. Okay. I mean that's amazing. Uh, I. I, I fly a lot, so I have to say that this is all such interesting information. Um, and so besides the temporary exhibits like Fly Girl, uh, you also have regular events, right? Yes, yes. And I, I want to plug our upcoming um, Wings and Wheels. So every third Saturday of the month, we typically have um, some kind of event here at the museum. Every quarter, we do Wings and Wheels. So March 18 from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. is Wings and Wheels. So you can come see the temporary exhibit. We're going to have speakers that go along with that. We're going to have a couple of gentlemen that we're going to are going to talk about the WASP um, program, and then another gentleman is going to talk about women in aviation, particularly in Texas. Um, and we have, um, you know, we have access to the ramp on the third Saturdays. We also give access to the third floor balcony here in the building. So we'll take you upstairs. You can go out on the balcony and take more pictures up there. And we, it kind of varies month to month what we do, but we do right. have special events um, those days. And, and that's, that's, that's amazing. And, and I love it. And I know since it's such a beautiful structure, architecturally sound, amazing. I know you guys have special events there like weddings, birthday parties, corporate yeah. events. So that is amazing. So what I will do, Maggie, I will give you the last 30 seconds of our segment. And I would like for you to tell us where you're located and how much your admission is. Okay, so we're on the west side of Hobby, to, uh, parallel to, to Telephone Road. So you go down Telephone, you'll see our building, turn left, and there you are. Um, and so we're open, typically we're open every day but Sunday from 10 to 5. Admission is $10 for adults, $5 for children. On our uh, third, uh, third Saturdays of the month, it's $12 for adults and $6 for children. Oh, perfect. And those are some great prices. They're, they're very student friendly. So Maggie, it has been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much, Maggie Brown, the executive director of the 1940s Air Terminal Museum and our virtual fun day guest. We'll have your info in our post after the show. It was a pleasure meeting you, Maggie. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. All right, great interview, Darren. Definitely, you know, from a history buff perspective, and we know you stay in the airport. That's your happy place. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're going to wrap things out with some announcements. Do you want to kick things off? Sure, why not? So, um, successful job fair networking. You can't beat that. Uh, it's a virtual workshop that assists students with detailing step-by-step -step explanations on creating, editing, and getting their resumes noticed. Students will also learn to get their resumes through online tracking systems. It is today, March 9th, from 1 to 2. We'll have the registration info in our post after the show. Awesome. And ending plastic pollution is the theme of this year's Earth Day poster contest. HCC's Vast Academy is sponsoring the Earth Day contest competition with the theme to end plastic solutions. S salute a pollution, excuse me, looking for the solution. <laughs> okay, the solution. <laughs> Listen, okay, so students can win discounts at HCC books, bookstores and posters will be judged on originality and creative expression. Deadline for the artwork is tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday, March 10th. So get that in. Details about how to enter are posted after the show. That's amazing because then that takes us right to the next uh, announcement we have, which is for Vocable, a journey of arts and writing. Uh, this is this is a great the HCC Creative Writing Club is an amazing club. So, uh, and they're looking for fiction, uh, creative nonfiction, poetry, artwork, scripts, and even comics comics, uh, for Vocable, a journey of arts and writing. Uh, the submissions will be open until March 23rd. And to learn more, we'll have the link in our post after the show. All right. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and shout out the Healthy Relationship Scholarship opportunity. HCC Counseling Services faculty and Office of Institutional Equity are offering two healthy relationship scholarships for $500. Qualifying HCC students can share their love 
or for art or prose by writing a 500 word essay or creating a piece of artwork. Artwork is a theme for scholarships. So apparently for these announcements, the deadline to turn in the essay or artwork is Sunday, April 9th. So check that out. Details will be posted after the show. Oh, perfect. And you know, we love a good scholarship. So uh, <laughs> most importantly, most importantly, summer registration opens today. Summer classes, summer registration have begun. Steel HCC is offering smaller, uh, more intensive spring sessions, all courses that are offered in person and online options. Uh, we have uh, online anytime, which is no established class meeting time unless it's listed. We have online on a schedule. That's a meeting time is set and the course material meets online. We have hybrid, which is a lecture class, meets potentially face-to-face -face and partially virtually in-person face-to-face courses with traditional meeting patterns at various campus locations. And then we also have our hybrid labs, which is our laboratory and course studies. To learn more about HTC programs, start dates, and options to cover costs, please apply at hccs.edu apply. All right. Awesome. That brings us to the end of the show and a slip, short little preview to what you can look forward to this week. We're going to have Film Friday. The Friends of River Oaks Theater will return to discuss its March 18th screening of Repo Man and As We Shiver at White Oak Music Hall's Raven Tower. And as we continue to commemorate Women's History Month, we'll welcome HCC professor Joanna Fax, who will discuss women and gender from her humanities course. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Up to the Minute. We'll see you next time.